بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم فورتھ لیکچر آن ایسفکسیا فسٹ آف آل دیر از اے کویشچن فرام اے اسٹوڈنٹ اباؤٹ دا پاورز آف دا سیشن کوٹ اینڈ امپلیمنٹیشن فورتھ ود ریلیٹنگ ٹو دا ڈیتھ سینٹینس the the lower the lower most court which can award the death sentence is the session court but it is a rule it is a law that the <coughs> death sentence awarded by the session court cannot implemented forthwith without the confirmation by the ہائی کورٹ جب تک سزائے موت جو سیشن کورٹ دیتی ہے اس کی توثیق جو ہے وہ ہائی توثیق یا تصدیق جو ہے وہ ہائی کورٹ نہیں کرتی اس کے اوپر امپلیمنٹ نہیں کیا وہ امپلیمنٹ نہیں کی جا سکتی اس کے اوپر عمل درآمد نہیں کیا جا سکتا یہ قانون ہے تو یہ بیٹا دو چیزیں ہیں one is the punishment and second is the power of punishment by the court and second is the implementation ek to ye hai ke adalat jo iski powers kya hai uske ikhtiyarat kya hai isme to koi shak nahi hai ke session court is the lowest court which can award death sentence now if the death sentence is awarded by the session court it cannot be implemented without confirmation by the high court high court ki confirmation ke baghair jo hai wo isko implement nahi kiya ja sakta session court ki punishment ko session court ki jo punishment hai usko high court ki confirmation ke baghair جو ہے وہ امپلیمنٹ نہیں کیا جا سکتا دس از دا لا اس میں یہ قطن نہیں اس میں جو لوور کورٹ کی سیشن کورٹ کی پاور ہے اس میں کوئی شک نہیں ہے کہ یہ وہی عدالت ہے جس کے پاس یہ پاور ہے کہ وہ کسی کو بھی سزائے موت سزا دے سکتی ہے پرابلم از امپلیمنٹیشن اگر سیشن کورٹ کسی کو سزائے موت دیتی ہے تو اس کو اس وقت تک اس کے اوپر عمل عمل درآمد نہیں ہو سکتا جب تک کہ اس کو ہائی کورٹ کنفرم نہ کر دے تو یہ ہے قانون اٹ از دا پنشمنٹ اوارڈیڈ بائی دا ڈیتھ ڈیتھ سینٹینس اوارڈیڈ بائی دا سیشن کورٹ از ناٹ امپلیمنٹیڈ فورتھ ود انٹل اینڈ ان نیس اٹ از کنفرمڈ بائی دا ہائی کورٹ دس از دا لا اس میں یہ کوئی ایسا مسئلہ نہیں ہے کہ جی جو ہے سیشن کورٹ کی پاورس ہیں وہ سزائے موت دے سکتی ہے لیکن اس کے اوپر عمل درآمد اس وقت ہوگا کہ جب یہ اس کو یہ ہائی کورٹ اس کو کنفرم کرے گی ڈاؤ مسئلہ یہ ہے کہ جب سیشن کورٹ اس کو دے گی سزائے موت تو عام طور پہ لوگ جو ہیں وہ اس کو چیلنج کرتے ہیں نیکسٹ کورٹ پہ عام طور پہ جو دوسری ہائر کورٹ ہے اس میں وہ چیلنج کرتے ہیں اپیل کرتے ہیں اس کی کہ جی یہ سزا جو ہے نا اس کو ختم کیا جائے تو یہ اگر کوئی بندہ اپیل میں نہیں جاتا جیسے کسی بندے کو سیشن کورٹ نے سزا دی ہے نو دا کویشچن از وہ اپیل میں نہیں جاتا کہ جگہ تھا جی میں نے اپیل میں یہ نہیں جانا مجھے سزائے موت دے دیں اب کیا ہوگا کیونکہ قانون تو یہ ہے کہ جب تک یہ سزائے موت جو سیشن کورٹ نے دی ہے اس کو کنفرم نہیں کرے گی ہائی کورٹ تو یہ سزائے موت پہ عمل درآمد نہیں ہوگا اب بندہ تو کہتا ہے میں نہیں جانا اپیل میں اب یہ ہوگا کہ جو جو گورنمنٹ ہے وہ ملزم کی طرف سے رادر مجرم کی طرف سے ہائی کورٹ میں جائے گی اور ادھر اسی طرح ہی گورنمنٹ اپیل کرے گی اور ادھر سے ہائی کورٹ سے اپنا ڈیسیزن لے گی تو وہ اس کے اوپر پھر عمل درآمد ہوگا ایک اور بھی وجہ ہوتی ہے سزا کے اوپر عمل درآمد نہ ہونا کہ آپ کے کسی بندے کو اگر سزائے موت ہو جاتی ہے پھر اس کا ہائی کورٹ سزائے موت دے دیتی ہے سپریم کورٹ دے دیتی ہے تو اس میں یہ نہیں ہوتا کہ آج سزا ہو گئی سزائے موت اناؤنس ہو گئی اور کل اس کو سزائے موت دے دیں گے 
اس کو چودہ دن دیتے ہیں کہ وہ آگے اپیل کر سکے تو چودہ دن میں اس نے آگے اپیل کرنی ہوتی ہے اپیل کرنے کے بعد سزائے موت پہ عمل درآمد ہوتا ہے اگر اپیل پینڈنگ ہو کسی عدالت میں تو پھر اس کے اوپر سزا کے اوپر موت کے اوپر عمل درآمد نہیں ہوتا جیسے کسی نے اپیل سزائے موت کے خلاف اپیل کر دی ہے سپریم کورٹ میں یا اس کی اپیل صدر پاکستان کے پاس گئی ہوئی ہے پینڈنگ ہے اس کے اوپر سزائے موت کے اوپر عمل درآمد نہیں ہوگا تو کورٹ کی جو سزا ہے سیشن کا جو پاور ہے وہ سزائے موت کی ہے وہ سزائے موت دے سکتی ہے لیکن اس کے اوپر عمل درآمد اسی وقت ہوگا جب یہ سزائے موت جو ہے کنفرم ہوگی ہائی کورٹ سے میرا خیال ہے کہ یہ مسئلہ اب کلیئر ہو گیا ہوگا نو وی کم بیک ٹو دا اسفکسیا اینڈ ڈراؤننگ پوسٹ مارٹم اپیرنس ان ڈراؤننگ سو ایکسٹرنلی دا کلوتھس آر ویکٹ آبویسلی اف دا باڈی از ریموڈ فرام دا واٹر دا کلوتھس ول بی ویٹ temperature of the body will be lower than the temperature of environment because the temperature of the water is lower than the temperature of environment generally the temperature of the water is lower than the temperature of environment so the body will have also the lower temperature than the environment after removal from the water <clears throat> then there is fine froth this is important as it is the surest sign of and team art on drowning <coughs> fine froth this froth is uh, present on the mouth and on the nose and it is copious in amount and the all the respiratory tract is full of this fine froth this is the reaction of the pollutant water present reaction of the uh, respiratory tract for the any pollution pollutants containing in the water so this reaction uh, causes the causes the body to form the fine froth this is in copious amount if you wipe out the uh, this uh, fine froth it will reappear again so and if you press the chest of that person copious amount of fine froth will come out of the nose and the mouth so this is the sure as sign of anti mortem drowning next is the instantaneous rigor ordinarily the immediately after death the body goes into the state of relaxation primary flaccidity all the muscles go into state of relaxation but in certain condition where there is emotional tension before death or there is great muscular activity before death a group of persons go immediately into state of contraction without going into state of relaxation this is called the instantaneous rigor so instantaneous rigor jaise kisi bande ne khud kushi ki hai pistol uske haath mein hai to khud kushi ke baad jo hai wo pistol uske haath mein badi mazbooti se pakda rahega due to this instantaneous rigor so in drowning there is great mental tension and great muscular activity before the death the person tries his best to avoid this drowning and <clears throat> during this the uh, group of muscles go into state of contraction the uh, hand of the drowned person may contain uh, petal may contain a bark of tree may contain uh, even the <clears throat> sand within the hand so this rigor this instantaneous rigor is a another surest sign of anti mortem drowning so hand may contain hand may grasp firmly the bark of the tree the petal and even the uh, sand present in the water then the hypostasis as during the drowning when the body is drowned the head is somewhat lower than the body under the water the head is sometimes somewhat lower then from uh, from the body so the <laughs> hypostasis will be present on the shoulders and on the face uh, hypostasis mainly present on the shoulder and on the face because of the position somewhat lower position of the head during after the 
drowning the hypostasis will be present on the face and the shoulders then washerman's skin if you have seen that when uh, for some times the water is the body or the part of the body is present inside and the water wrinkles may appear upon that so these wrinkles usually occurs to the washerman jo dhobi hain wo kapde dhote rehte hain kafi der pani mein rehte hain to unka jo hai wo washerman hands ho jate hain so washerman skin the wrinkles become appear on the skin when the uh, body <coughs> remain under water sometime or a part of the body even the hands the feet may remain under the water for sometimes the wrinkle appears on the skin this is the washerman skin usually the uh, on the uh, this the hands and the feet of the washerman the skin become wrinkled this is the washerman skin <coughs> then the internal appearance internal appearance in case of drowning water in the middle ear cavity is the surest sign of anti mortem drowning water present in the middle ear cavity is the surest sign of anti mortem drowning now the <coughs> how we will come to know whether the middle ear contain water or not take a syringe and a needle then puncture this uh, tympanic membrane with the help of that needles then pull the piston of the uh, <coughs> this injection or this uh, uh, and then pull out the piston and you will see the water inside the uh, this injection so it means the water is present in the middle ear cavity wo jo hai wo syringe le take the syringe le uske andar needle lagaye needle se puncture kare uske uska tympanic membrane usko piston ko piche khinche agar water aa jaye to it means the water is present in the middle ear cavity it is also the sure as sign of anti mortem drowning <coughs> then the water the usually the this respiratory tract is full of the fine froth and when you remove during the post mortem examination when you remove the sternum uh, the uh, lungs bulges out of the chest cavity thoracic cavity this is called the ballooning of the lungs due to excessive amount of this uh, fine froth present Uh, in the lungs in the respiratory tract when you during the post mortem examination when you remove the sternum the lungs bulges out from the uh, thoracic cavity it is due to the ballooning of the lungs <coughs> then git ordinarily the water during this drowning the water may enter into the git also in but in case of anti mortem and in case of post mortem drowning in case of post mortem drowning the water does not enter into the duodenum the lowest level at which water can go is the stomach usually this this does not go into the stomach even when it in a case of post mortem drowning when a body is thrown uh, after death into the water to make a case of uh, accidental drowning <clears throat> the water which enters into the body do don't go beyond the stomach maximum the lowest level at which this water can gone in post mortem drowning is the stomach and water in the duodenum means the it is a case of anti mortem drowning water present in the duodenum means it is a case of anti mortem drowning then the diatoms diatoms is a unicellular algae 
this is a this is an mcq diatom is a unicellular algae it is a virus it is a bacteria and uh, uh, multiple choice may be given it is a unicellular algae suspended in the water the unicellular algae spend, suspended in the water different areas contain different type of uh, diatoms thousands types of diatoms are present in the water different areas contain different di diatoms different quantity different size different shapes so as a water present under the uh, surface of this wmc will be different from the water present in the van jenning college and water present under earth uh, in van jenning college will be totally diatoms will be totally different in case of water under the surface of this van jenning university and so on every area has different uh, shapes and uh, sizes of the this unicellular algae so uh, <coughs> when this water enter into the respiratory tract in drowning diatoms also enters into the body they get enter into the circulation and then from circulation they may enter into the heart enter into the brain and even enters into the uh, uh, bone marrows and bone marrow of the lung bones and other bones may contain this Uh, uh, different types of diatoms and the area uh, from where this uh, this body has drowned may be uh, detected by the type of this unicellular unicellular algae present in the uh, in bone marrows the ideal bone from which a bone a, a diatoms unicellular algae may be detected is the sternum may be detected is the sternum so ideal bone for detection of the diatoms is the sternum sternum is uh, <coughs> removed then the this uh, bone marrow is taken and sent to the forensic science laboratory for detection of diatoms different areas contain different type of diatoms so this presence of diatoms is also a sure at sign of anti mortem drowning present of diatoms in the bones bone marrows is a sure as sign of anti mortem drowning now see different types of diatoms present the in the <coughs> different type of waters thousand type of this unicellular algae diatoms are present in the water so <coughs> this detection of diatoms from the bone marrow is a sure as sign of anti mortem drowning <clears throat> then medical legal importance anti mortem and post mortem drowning uh, we will discuss it in the next slides then suicidal homicidal and accidental drowning suicidal drowning is common particularly in the villages where the wells are present or where the river is present where the canal is present a pond is present it is common is the in the rural areas so jahan pe ye nehre hoti hain darya ho ya koi talab shalab ho ya kuwa ho to usme alako mein jo hai particularly female commit suicide with uh, <coughs> inside this uh, uh, well or in canal or in river so suicidal drowning is common homicidal drowning is very rare it may be the person may be uh, homicidal with the help of drowning person may be murdered uh, with the drowning but usually this water medium is not used to homicide or to kill a person so homicidal drowning is rare and accidental drowning as you know is very much common Uh, particularly in the warm weather the usually the young people go to the canal and during this uh, process the swimming the swimming the person may drown 
this is the type of different types of diatoms <coughs> diatoms in suspected drowning this diatoms water containing diatoms enter into the lungs then into the circulation and from circulation into the bone marrow and thus diatoms is detected from the bone marrow the ideal uh, bone marrow the ideal bone from which the uh, this uh, diatoms are detected is the sternum <coughs> the same way entry of diatoms into the body from the circulatory system into the uh, uh, so from the respiratory system to the circulatory system and then into the bone marrow the <coughs> difference between the fresh water drowning and sea water drowning the absorption of water is massive in fresh water drowning and it is small quantity negligible quantity you may say not the none but it is negligible quality uh, quantity or very small quantity of the uh, this sea water enter into the <coughs> lungs while this fresh water massive amount of this fresh water enters into the respiratory tract because from the respiratory tract it enters into the circulation the volume of the blood increases there is breakdown of the rbc release of the uh, uh, potassium ion due to the breaking down of this rbcs and in case of sea water small amount of uh, the sea water enter into the respiratory system instead of entering into the water due to hypertonicity it will squeeze out squeeze the blood into the uh, lungs so the even the 40% of the volume of the blood may squeeze back into the lungs uh, if the sea water enters into the respiratory tract so negligible or small amount of water enter into the respiratory tract Uh, in case of the sea water drowning absorption of sodium chloride as usually non water and fresh water contains negligible amount of sodium uh, chloride or may be no sodium chloride so there will be non absorption of sodium chloride in case of this uh, fresh water drowning massive in case of this so uh, uh, absorption of sodium sodium chloride in case of sea water drowning <coughs> because the sea water contains more than 3% of the sodium chloride plasma in fresh water drowning water enter into the circulation volume of the blood is increases there is hemodilution hemodilution is uh, there breakdown of rbc is there and in case of sea water drowning the blood is squeezed back into the lungs the volume of the blood may remain may go up to the 40 40% uh, blood may come into the lungs so there will be hemo concentration then rbc changes in case of fresh water drowning the water enter into the circulation in water amount of the uh, blood increases there is breakdown of the uh, rbc there is hemolysis there is increase potassium ions in the circulation while this none occurs in case of sea water drowning blood volume massively increase in case of fresh water drowning as water enter into the blood from the respiratory system while in case of sea water drowning the blood is squeezed back into the lungs so the volume decreases in case of sea water uh, uh, drowning cause of death in case of fresh water drowning is the ventricular fibrillation and in case of sea water drowning it is the cardiac stand still cardiac stand still or cardiac asystole then the fatal period 4.4 to 5 minutes in case of fresh water drowning and fatal period in case of sea water drowning it is 8 to 12 minutes so more time is required in case of more fatal period is there in case of sea water drowning as compared to fresh water drowning so this is the difference between sea water and fresh water drowning 
now we come to the important question that a the usually this is a university question a body is recovered from the uh, well from the canal from the river that body is recovered how will you decide whether it is a case of anti mortem drowning or post mortem drowning this is a question frequently asked in the theory paper so in anti mortem drowning fine froth is there this formation of fine froth is a vital reaction present only in the living person this is the reaction of the respiratory tract to the against the uh, water and pollutants present in the water so fine froth copious amount of fine froth present in anti mortem drowning and it is absent in post mortem drowning then the cadaveric spasm get a very spasm instantaneous rigor as you already know in this the a group of muscles go into state of contraction instead of going into relaxation so in cadaveric spasm it is present in anti mortem drowning only and not present in post mortem drowning then cyanosis is present in anti mortem drowning absent in post mortem drowning uh cyanosis first appears on the lips cyanosis first appear on the lips uh, facial congestion is present in case of anti mortem drowning and absent in case of post mortem drowning as i have already told you that in anti mortem drowning water may usually water usually present in the duodenum and in case of post mortem drowning when the body is Uh, dead body is thrown into the water to make it a case of accidental uh, drowning the water does not go beyond the stomach the presence of water in the duodenum means it is a case of anti mortem drowning then the <coughs> water in the middle ear cavity again it is the surest sign of anti mortem drowning and this is not present in case of post mortem drowning congestion of the organs congestion of the organs it is present in the anti mortem drowning and absent in the post mortem drowning presence of diatom it is only in the anti mortem drowning and not in the post mortem drowning uh, <coughs> so these are the points differentiating point between the anti mortem and post mortem drowning fine froth water in the middle ear cavity and the diatoms three are the surest sign of anti mortem drowning fine froth present at the nose and the mouth if you wipe out this fine froth it will reappear again if you press the chest large amount of this fine froth will come out of the uh, uh, mouth and the nose so fine froth number 1 number 2 water in the middle middle ear cavity and number 3 detection of diatoms these three are the uh, surest sign of anti mortem drowning see here the this uh, fine froth present at the nostril see here fine froth present at the mouth fine froth coming out of the nose and the mouth fine froth coming from the mouth fine froth coming from the nose show a sign of anti mortem drowning fine froth coming out from the nose instantaneous rigor as i have already told you so here see you see petals are present inside the hand it may be a bark of the tree and in even it may be some type of sand and mud may be present inside the hand this is the instantaneous rigor and this is also a surest sign of anti mortem drowning then the washerman foot 
or washerman skin sodden foot another name is sodden foot it may it is present in case of drowning but it may be present in case of post mortem drowning also see washerman foot see the washerman hand see the wrinkles present on the skin then the lungs there is ballooning of the lungs and when you during the post mortem examination you remove the sternum the bulb the lungs bulges out of the uh, this uh, chest cavity thoracic cavity the ballooning of the lungs ballooning of the lungs when you remove the sternum the the lungs bulges out of the thoracic cavity see the different types of diatoms present in the water see sorry see the shape see the size shape of different diatoms present inside the water and this detection of diatoms is another sure as sign of anti mortem drowning then you see and you may be able to know the manner of death whether it is a suicidal drowning homicidal drowning or the accidental drowning as very much obvious from this picture their both hands are tied with some type of rope on the back it is clear cut a case of homicidal drowning another case of drowning now drowning and this uh, putrefaction drowning and putrefaction when the body is inside the water when the body is inside the water <coughs> as the temperature of the water is lower than the temperature of atmosphere so the due to this lower temperature the rate of putrefaction is slow when the body is in the water but when the body is removed from the water the rate of putrefaction is very very much increased when the body is inside the water the rate of putrefaction is low and when it is removed from the water it is out of the water the rate of putrefaction will be very rapid see here there is large or swelling of the face of the body the tongue is protruded out of the mouth see the bloodshot eyes this bloodshot eyes is present in strangulation is present in the drowning as even also in the hanging see this is a case of sexual asphyxia <coughs> as the person as there is when the blood supply to the brain decreases there is pleurable sexual hallucination so white man usually <coughs> they put a ligature around the neck and then constrict this ligature and there is uh, this the one side of the ligature may be around the neck and other may be on the feet or uh, <coughs> on the big toe when the leg is straightened there is constriction on the neck blood supply to the brain is reduced and there is sexual asphyxia accidental death may occur during this sexual asphyxia see here the see the uh, uh, lips the cyanosis first appearance first appears on the lips this is an other mcq see the mark of ligature and see the congestion and petechial hemorrhage present again the ligature around the neck <coughs> and see here the congestion of the face see the mark of ligature here 
स्ट्रैंगुलेशन सो दिस इज अ पर्सन ये जो बंदा था ये पब्लिकली ये जो है इस तरह अपने आप को हैंग करता था और ये इसकी रोजी का एक वसीला था कि वो हैंग करता था अपने आप को पब्लिकली और लोग उसको कुछ चार पैसे दे देते थे इस तरह ये अपना कुछ गुजारे के पैसे इसको मिल जाते थे खासे और लेकिन एक दफ़ा ये हुआ कि ये बंदा जो है हैंग किया और वो हैंगिंग जो है वो नीचे से लोग तालियाँ बजा रहे हैं और थर्टीन मिनट्स तक जब उसकी बॉडी लटकी रही तो लोगों में पहले तो लोग यही समझते रहे कि फॉर गेटिंग द एम्यूजमेंट ऑफ द पर्सन एम्यूजमेंट ऑफ द पब्लिक ये दिस इज द हैंगिंग इज प्रोलॉन्ग हैंगिंग बट आफ्टर द थर्टीन मिनट्स देर वॉज वैन द बॉडी वॉज रिमूव द पर्सन वॉज डेथ एक्सीडेंटल डेथ सी नाउ दिस इज ए केस ऑफ अगेन सेक्शुअल एसफिक्सिया ए मेल इज इन द क्लोज ऑफ द ही मेल दिस इज एंड ऑफ द एसफिक्सिया एंड नाउ वी वेल start the forensic psychiatry forensic psychiatry means legal aspect of mental diseases legal aspect of mental diseases the <coughs> legal aspect of psychiatry legal aspect of mental diseases psychiatry and law comes together that the question may arise if a person is a mad person is a mentally abnormal person and if he commits a crime whether he will be responsible for committing the crime or not whether any punishment is awarded to that person or is not or not a person which is mentally unfit if he commits a crime whether he will be responsible for committing the crime whether he will be subjected to punishment or not this is the forensic psychiatry the crime and the mental state of a person mental diseases and crime the criminal responsibility and the liability to punishment whether a person is responsible is responsible whether a mentally deranged person is responsible for his crime or not forensic psychiatry legal aspect of mental diseases first is the definition of offense what is offense the offense is dealt under section 40 ppc this is an other mcq section 40 deals with 1 2 3 4 5 5 or the offense is dealt under section of ppc 40 section is about the offense and section 44 as you know deals with the injuries now the definition of this uh, offense act of commission or act of omission made punishable by the code code means law so act of commission or act of omission act of commission you have a person has committed something which he should not commit act of commission kisi bande ne wo kar diya hai jo nahi karna chahiye tha as a murder as infliction of injuries upon the other person kisi bande ko crime nahi karna chahiye agar wo crime karta hai this is the act of commission he has committed something something has been committed by that person act of commission उसने वो किया है जो उसको नहीं करना चाहिए था एज उसने किसी को कत्ल कर दिया है दिस इज द एक्ट ऑफ कमीशन उसने किसी को पकड़ के मारा है इंजरीज लगाई हैं दिस इज आल्सो एक्ट ऑफ कमीशन तो वो चीज़ उसने की है जो उसको नहीं करनी चाहिए थी दिस इज द एक्ट ऑफ कमीशन ही हैज़ कमिटेड समथिंग विच शुड नॉट बी कमिटेड बाई दैट पर्सन इज द एक्ट ऑफ कमीशन एंड द एक्ट ऑफ कमीशन ही हैज़ कमिटेड समथिंग He has omitted something. उसको ये चीज़ करनी चाहिए थी लेकिन उसने नहीं की Opposite to the commission is the omission. He has omitted something. उसने वो नहीं किया 
जो कि उसको करना चाहिए था एस इट इज़ द लीगल ड्यूटी ऑफ द डॉक्टर टू टेक द कंसेंट बिफोर द ट्रीटमेंट बिफोर द एनी ऑपरेटिव प्रोसीजर बिफोर एनी दिस डायग्नोस्टिक प्रोसीजर इट इज़ द लीगल ड्यूटी ऑफ द डॉक्टर टू टेक द कंसेंट ऑफ द पर्सन नाउ इफ ए डॉक्टर डोंट टेक द कंसेंट फ्रॉम द पेशेंट बिफोर द स्टार्ट ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट बिफोर एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ द पेशेंट इट इज़ ए एक्ट ऑफ ओमिशन ही हैज़ ओमिटेड समथिंग ही हैज़ ओमिटेड समथिंग उसने वो नहीं किया जो उसका करना चाहिए था ये एक्ट ऑफ ओमिशन मेड पनिशेबल बाई द कोर्ट सो द एक्ट ऑफ कमीशन पर्सन हैज कमिटेड समथिंग विच ही शुड नाट हैव कमिटेड इट इज़ द एक्ट ऑफ कमीशन जैसे किसी ने किसी को कतल कर दिया है दिस इज द एक्ट ऑफ कमीशन उसको ये नहीं करना चाहिए था एक्ट ऑफ कमीशन ही हैज ओमिटेड समथिंग द पर्सन हैज कमिटेड समथिंग उसने जो वो चीज़ नहीं की जो उसको करनी चाहिए थी बिल्कुल अपोजिट टू द एक्ट ऑफ कमीशन उसको वो नहीं करना चाहिए उसको वो uh, करना चाहिए था जो उसने नहीं किया ही हैज़ ओमिटेड समथिंग वो उसने नहीं किया जिसको करना चाहिए था जैसे उसने जो है मरीज से कॉन्सेंट नहीं नहीं ली नहीं ली बिफोर एग्जामिनेशन बिफोर ट्रीटमेंट बिफोर डायग्नोस्टिक प्रोसीजर उसने बिफोर ऑपरेटिव प्रोसीजर अगर उसने कॉन्सेंट नहीं ली तो दिस इज कार द एक्ट ऑफ ओमिशन मेड पनिशेबल बाई द ला दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ ओफेंस acts of commission required intention as you already know intention mensri bad intention intention and action two things are there intention and action so intention mensri the bad intention with which the crimes are committed mensri bad intention this is the intention with which the planning of a crime is made this is the bad intention with which the planning of the crime is made and then the after the planning if the action is taken it is called the actus reus after the planning if the action is taken it is called the act reus actus reus so intention plus action mensri plus actus reus is a crime or offence mensri plus actus reus is equal to crime <coughs> mensri plus actus reus is equal to crime aapke sath jo student baitha hua hai aapne irada kiya hai ki main isko abhi thappad maar deta hu this is your intention this is your bad intention this is your mensri to agar aap usko thappad maar dete hain to that is the actus reus so intention plus actus reus is equal to a crime mensri plus actus reus is equal to crime lekin agar aapne sirf irada kiya hai only the mensri is there only the planning is there aapne sirf irada kiya hai ki main saath baithe us student ko thappad maar dun to ye crime nahi hai it should be mensri plus the actus reus <coughs> legal aspect of mental diseases डेल्ट अंडर सेक्शन 84 पाकिस्तान पिनल कोड सेक्शन 84 पाकिस्तान पिनल कोड नथिंग इज एन ऑफेंस विच इज डन बाय ए पर्सन नथिंग इज एन ऑफेंस विच इज डन बाय ए पर्सन हु एट द टाइम ऑफ डूइंग इट बाय रीजन ऑफ अनसाउंडनेस ऑफ माइंड इज इनकेपेबल ऑफ नोइंग द नेचर ऑफ दैट और दैट ही इज डूइंग वट इज इज रॉन्ग और कॉन्ट्रेरी टू ला इज कॉल्ड द इज कॉल्ड द मैकनाटन रूल ऑल्सो नाउ फर्स्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड नथिंग इज अफेंस विच इज डन बाई ए पर्सन हु एट द टाइम ऑफ कमिटिंग द क्राइम ड्यू टू अनसाउंडनेस ऑफ माइंड ड्यू टू द ए प्रेजेंस ऑफ ए मेंटल डिजीज is not able to know the number one nature number two consequences 
is not able to know the nature and consequence of this that act uh, <coughs> or he he did and he did not know that whether he uh, the, he is doing whether it is right or wrong so it is also called right from wrong test the person is mentally unable to know what is wrong what is right he is unable to differentiate between the right and wrong so this is he is unable to know he is unable to differentiate between right or wrong what he is doing is right or wrong is lawful or contrary to the law is according to the law or contrary to the law he will not be held responsible for that crime so nothing is an offense which is done by a person who is suffering from a mental disease in such a way that he is unable to know the nature and consequence of his act or what he is doing is right or wrong or whether it is according to the law or is or contrary to the law then he will not be held responsible for his criminal act now please keep it in mind that every person in the world has some uh, mental problems maybe mental illness as when the professional comes you are under great tension you are under anxiety you may be under depression so in that case if the disease is at such level that the person is unable to know the nature and consequence of his act then the person is unable to know what he is doing is right or wrong so or whether it is according to law or contrary to law then he will be held uh, he will not be held responsible for his criminal act ye choti moti depression ye tension ye anxiety ye it does not means ke aap kisi ko uthut ke qatl kar dein no the person is suffering from a mental disease in such a way that he is not uh, he is not able to know the nature and consequence of his act or he is not able to know what is wrong what is right or what is according to law and what is contrary to law against the law then he will not be held responsible for his criminal act so the so if a person who is insane sane normal mentally normal person and insane mentally abnormal person jisko hum pagal bhi keh sakte hain पुराने ज़माने में जो है इसको लुनेटिक कहते थे पागल को एल यू एन ए टी आई सी लुनेटिक और फिर उसको मैड कहते थे अब इसको मेंटली अब नॉर्मल पर्सन भी कहते हैं सो so, कोई भी पागल बंदा जो क्राइम करता है ही विल नॉट बी हेल्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर हिज क्राइम उसको जो है उसकी जिम्मेदारी नहीं होगी और ना उसको सजा दी जा सकती है कोई पागल बंदा है उसने पत्थर उठाया हुआ है लोगों के पीछे भाग रहा है किसी को पत्थर मार देता है उसका सर फट जाता है तो नो पनिशमेंट मे बी अवॉर्डेड टू दैट पर्सन बिकॉज एट द टाइम ऑफ कमिटिंग द क्राइम ही डज नॉट नो द नेचर ऑफ नेचर एंड कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ हिज क्राइम एंड आल्सो डोंट नो वट इज़ रॉन्ग वट इज़ राइट एंड आल्सो ही इज़ अनएबल टू डिफ्रेंशिएट वट इज़ अकॉर्डिंग टू द लॉ एंड वट इज़ कंट्रेरी टू द लॉ so this is the section 84 pakistan penal code it is also called ngri not guilty by the reason of insanity due to pagalpan ki wajah se the person will not be held responsible for his criminal act <coughs> not guilty the person has committed the crime but he is not guilty he will not guilty by the reason of insanity by the reason of unsoundness of mind ngri is a university note write short notes on ngri so not guilty by the reason of insanity it is also called macnaughton's rule this macnaughton rule is also a university question ngri not guilty by the reason of insanity the person is not held responsible for his criminal act due to unsoundness of mind ngri not guilty by the reason of 
insanity. <clears throat> then the Mental Health Act. This is an act now, not an ordinance. In the past, in 1912, the English people made a law of this uh, uh, forensic psychiatry. It is called the <coughs> Lunacy Act. Lunatic, Mentally Abnormal Person, L-U-N-A. T I C lunatic and from this lunatic there was a lunacy act 1912 it was repealed and replaced by mental health act 2001 federal mental health authority under section 3 we will only deal uh, who this sections which are applicable to us so, Federal health, Mental Health Authority was made and the chairperson, there was a chairperson and members. So, the members were Secretary, Ministry of Health, Government of Punjab. Secretary of Health, Government of Punjab. Then, second member is Director General, Ministry of Health, sorry, Government of Pakistan, sorry. This is the Federal Health Authority, Secretary, Government of Health, uh, sorry, Ministry of Health, Government of Punjab, the Director General, Government, uh, Ministry of Health, Government of Pakistan, Provisional Health Secretaries, Secretary, Punjab, Secretary Health Punjab, Secretary Health uh, Sindh, etc., Advisor in Psychiatry, Medical Directorate, GHQ, from the Army Medical Corps. This advisor is taken as a member advisor in psychiatry. Uh, <coughs> then in Medical Directorate, GHQ, seven eminent psychiatrists of at least 10 years good standing. So the seven members are taken among the psychiatrists having more than 10 years of good standing in the profession. Then under this federal health authority, the provisional boards of visitors are there and a chairperson from this provincial board of visitors, chairperson is the judge of a high court. Then other members are two psychiatrists, one with minimum 10 years experience, one prominent citizen of good standing. Achhi repute ka koi bhi jo hai wo citizen of Pakistan jo hai uske ek member banaya ja sakta hai. Two member of parliaments of repute with minimum 12 years standing. One nominated by PMDC. Then Director General Health of Provincial Provincial or his nominee will be an other member of this provincial board of visitors. Then assessment and treatment. So assessment and treatment, section 8, care and treatment on the informal or voluntary basis. So one way of uh, getting admission in the mental hospital. The, usually the university question is <clears throat> how a person can get admission uh, and discharge from a mental hospital under this mental health ordinance, Men mental health act. So the admission and the release from the mental health, uh, uh, from the mental uh, hospital is dealt, uh, is usually asked in the uh, university question under the this mental health ordinance. So one way of the entry into the admission into the a mental hospital that person voluntarily voluntarily go and uh, uh, inform the doctor that he is suffering from some type of mental illness this is the voluntary admission and he if he is get admission this is the admission on voluntary basis the doctor person jo hai wo mere samajhta hai ki mujhe kuch mental masail ho rahe hain wo mental hospital chala jata hai aur usko admit kar liya jata hai so that is one way of the ad getting admission of this uh, uh, mental uh, abnormal person to the uh, mental hospital. Then duration of period of detention, 
for our how much period of detention, for how much period the person may be detained, for assessment under Section 10, the person may be detained up to 28 days. For treatment under Section 11, the person may be detained for about six months and this is renewable. It may be extended to another six months. Then for urgent admission under Section 12, a person may be retained for 72 hours. Then for emergency holding under Section 13, a person may be kept under observation for 24 hours. Then assessment and treatment Chapter 3, mentally disordered person found in public place. Now, this is an other way of getting admission into a mental hospital. So, the, a mentally disordered person found in the public place as a person found in anywhere in the public uh, place, <coughs> he may be doing nothing or he may become a source of danger for himself or for the other public. Yes, वो बंदा पागल है उसने हाथ में ईंट उठाई हुई है हाथ में डंडा उठाया हुआ है लोगों के पीछे भाग रहा है तो इन दैट केस दैट पर्सन विल बी अरेस्टेड बाय द स्टेशन हाउस ऑफिसर थानेदार उसको अरेस्ट करेगा और उसको किसी सेक्रेटरी के अस्पताल में या सेक्रेटरी यूनिट ऑफ ए हॉस्पिटल उसको शिफ्ट कर देगा एंड दिस इज द अनदर वे सेकंड वे ऑफ गेटिंग एडमिशन इनटू ए मेंटल हॉस्पिटल that a person may be found on a public pu public place and if that person, that mad person, that mentally abnormal person is beating, is uh, shouting and beating uh, the other persons, he has become the source of danger for the other public. He is called dangerous lunatic. Dangerous lunatic. The person has become the source of danger to the other persons. He is called the dangerous lunatic. So, the, a dangerous lunatic or any other person found on the public place, he may be shifted to the mental hospital by the local station house officer, by the thanedar of that area. Thanedar usko pakad ke giriftar karke usko le jayega. Another way of getting admission. So, still another way that he may be brought by some brought with some relatives. The, some relatives take that patient to the mental hospital. The person may be admitted. Another way of getting the admission into the mental hospital and most common way is that the, he, the person is shifted by his close relative to the mental facility. Discharge of a patient Psychiatric in charge can discharge a patient in writing at any time during treatment. So during treatment, if the psychiatric in charge, he may uh, he may be of opinion that the person is uh, already uh, is uh, uh, right mentally uh, is all right now, and he may be discharged. Then he is he may be discharged from the hospital by the psychiatric in charge. Uh, <coughs> Then the psychiatrist in, in charge may discharge a patient upon application if he deems it fit. Then another way of discharge of a person from the mental hospital that the, uh, psych, uh, the patient applies in writing to the, his psychiatrist that he is already know and he uh, needs more, no more admission in the, uh, he is no more uh, retention in the uh, mental hospital so he may be released then the person is medically examined and see if he is if he is fit he may be discharged from the hospital then other is discharged by order of the magistrate another way of getting discharged from the hospital that the an application is uh, made that upon application of a patient after inquiry provided the patient is not a mentally disordered prisoner and we will discuss it what is mentally uh, disorder prisoners so if a the person may or the relatives may apply to the magistrate that the person is now all right and he may be released then he may be 
then the magistrate will write down to the psychiatrist in charge and then he will examine the person and if, if, at, 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 if he found fit then the patient is discharged. Uh, <coughs> then discharge of a detained person found not to be mentally disordered after assessment another way that after examination person is found fit is not mentally upset is not mentally ill then he may be discharged discharge of a detained person found not to be mentally disordered after assessment will be discharged forthwith by an approved psychiatrist of the facility notifying the authority relatives then the duty of the hospital to inform relative of the discharge. Now it is the legal duty of the administration of the hospital. So administrator is usually the medical superintendent of the hospital that he should inform the relatives of the patient that he will be discharged on such a such day and preferably the seven days he should write the letter seven days before the date of discharge to the relatives of the person so that the person may be taken back to the house by the relatives. Then application to the magistrate for discharge by relatives as if admitted section 10 or 11 and with an other way of discharge is discharged by the magistrate. Application may be given by the person, the patient himself or may be given by the relatives. Protection of Human rights of mentally disordered persons, cases of attempted suicide to be assessed by psychiatrists for any mental health problem. In case of attempted suicide, when the, when the <coughs> crime fails, the person has attempted suicide but the inside suicide is not successful, then the person may be shifted to the psychiatrist for evaluation of any mental disease. Professional confidentiality, no disclosure to public through press media unless permitted by the patient. So professional confidentiality, we will study it in the next uh, chapters when we will study the consent, the legal aspect of medical practice. Professional con confidentiality will be discussed. The informed consent in writing to be obtained from patient, guardian or on prescribed form before starting investigation treatment. So, uh, as you know, it is the legal duty of the uh, <coughs> doctor to take the consent before examination, before starting of treatment, before any uh, diagnostic procedure, before any operative, operative procedure is performed, the consent should be taken from the patient or his guardian. This is the we will study it what types of uh, consent, what is informed consent. Then forensic psychiatric services, forensic psychiatric services, special security forensic psychiatric facilities to be developed by government to house mentally disordered prisoners, offenders as may be prescribed admission, transfer or removal of criminal patient will be under administrative control of inspector general prisons. Board of Visitors shall have access to such prison persons. Then repeal and saving as I have already told you that the Lunacy Act was framed by the constituted by the English people in 1912. And this Lunacy Act now has been repealed and replaced by the Mental Health Act. Uh, <coughs> this is uh, the end of the lecture mental health ordinance we will continue the forensic psychiatry in the next lecture so allah office uh, <coughs> thank you very much allah office.